In this problem, we're finding the net electric field due to two source charges. So up here at point P, which is the field point, the electric field due to Q1 will point away from Q1 because Q1 is a positive charge. Then it will be in line like this, so that will be E1. And the distance from Q1 to P, I'm going to call R1. Similarly, Q2 creates an electric field up at point P, and the distance from Q2 up to point P I'll call R2. But because Q2 is a negative charge, the electric field points towards Q2. So it points down like that, and I'll call that E2. Now we're trying to find the vector sum of these two fields, which would be pointing somewhere up here. That will be our E net. And we're just trying to find the two components of E net. Now I'm going to define some angles to help me with this calculation. I'm going to call the angle between the x-axis and R1 phi, and I'm going to call the angle between the x-axis and R2 theta, which means up here on my diagram at my field point, E1 is an angle phi up from the x-axis, and E2 is an angle theta down from the x-axis. Okay, now we'll find the magnitudes of E1 and E2 using the definition of the electric field due to a point charge. So the magnitude of E1 is equal to Coulomb's constant K times the magnitude of Q1 over the distance from the charge to the point of interest squared. And remember, we can only use the letters that are given to us in the problem in our answer. So we can use Q1, Q2, A, B, and Y. But we can't use R1, theta, or phi. So let's get R1 in terms of A and Y. And it would simply be A squared plus Y squared, square rooted squared, so it's just to the 1 power. Okay, similarly, E2, the magnitude, is K magnitude of Q2 over R2 squared. So it's K magnitude of Q2. In this case, it's B squared plus Y squared. Now, to get the components, I'm going to write these two electric field vectors in terms of their I hat, J hat components. So E1 vector will be the magnitude kq1 over a squared plus y squared times the cosine of phi for the x component plus the magnitude times the sine of phi j hat. And similarly the electric field due to Q2 is magnitude of that field times cosine of theta this time, and then minus, because the y component points down, magnitude of E2 times the sine of phi theta j hat. Okay, now as I said earlier, we cannot leave theta and phi in our answer, so let's get those in terms of the variables that were given. So we can see from the triangle that, that the cosine of phi is equal to a over r1, which is a over the root of a squared plus y squared. Similarly, sine phi is equal to y over r1, so it's y over the root of a squared plus y squared. And for theta, we just substitute in b instead of a. So we have b over r2, or b over the root of b squared plus y squared, and sine theta is y over r2, so it's y over the root of b squared plus y squared. All right, let's sub that into our components. And 
I'll go right away to the net x component. So it's the x component from 1 plus the x component from 2. Okay, so the x component from 1 is k magnitude q1. And then I'm going to substitute cosine phi in there. And on the bottom, now I'm going to have a squared plus y squared to the 3 halves, because 1 plus a half is 3 halves. And then for the second electric field, I've got q2, b, and now b squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. Okay, that's the x component. And then the y component doesn't look too different. That's magnitude. First one now I've got a y instead of an a, but I still have the three halves on the bottom, and I have a minus here because the y component of b two points down. Plus y squared to the three halves, and that's our final answer.